I try to break influence and the science of influence down into concrete skills and ideas that aren't just easy for leaders to apply, but are easy for leaders to teach to other people, to empower them to be more influential. Influence really isn't rocket science. When I teach this class at Yale that Pep mentioned, Students come and take seven weeks of a boot camp with me where we do lots of science, lots of strategies. And the main thing that people say they get out of it by the end is so simple. It's just ask. The C-suite is saying, you must take risks, you must be brave, you must innovate, we must think differently. And all of us are going, great, how? And nobody's showing people how. So all I did was decide to take and create a toolkit that makes innovation less intimidating for people, creativity tangible for the people who hate ambiguity and grey, and the process fun. Why is it fun? Because our employees use it when I'm not around, that's why it's fun. And the more experience, the more expertise we have, the wider, the deeper and the faster is our river of thinking on the industry in which you work, allowing you and me to make quick and informed decisions. But in a post-pandemic world, we're being asked to get out of our river of thinking faster and faster because of the level of disruption that's coming. Nobody is going back to business as usual. We're all going back to business as unusual. So my goal in the next few minutes is to give you two or three tools to stop you thinking like this and give you permission to think like that. Writing is a very small part of the job. 99% of the job is actually reading, making many, many, many notes. And then at some point you start, you start writing it down and creating the story. And for me, that process is very similar to making music actually. It's all about melody, it's all about rhythm. And one thing that makes it quite frustrating sometimes or tiresome is that you always have to start at the beginning again. It can be quite a hassle because you have to keep, keep on reading and rereading at the start again and again and again, because you can't change anything on page, like say 250, because it impacts things on page 53 as well. Anyway, I'm quite obsessed about my writing. <laughs> I'll tell you two truths, yeah, two pieces of truth. First of all, I never read a book. The second thing is I don't own a phone and I haven't owned a phone for five years. From my perspective means that we need to look at the reality right now. I mean, first of all, an average adult American is spending 10 and a half hour glued to a screen every day. Now, that's the same as 66% of our awakening time. And if you don't think that's enough, then take a look at Gene Z, the generation set. Those folks which are born after 1997, they spent 75% of their awakening time in front of a screen. So the fact is we don't see things anymore. We don't meet people anymore. But the worst thing is we never get bored anymore. And boredom is the foundation for creativity. Get rid of the phone get bored and then become creative.